Hello children, we are on our uh, second lesson or lesson 2 which is the integumentary system. So your body is covered with skin. Its main function is to protect the organs inside the body. It also functions for insulation, regulation of heat, and excretion of wastes. When you do an intense physical activity, the temperature of your body rises and you perspire. This is because the skin regulates the temperature of the body. It secretes water together with some salts and other substances, and this immediately gives the body a cooling effect. Various parts of the skin help for protection, regulation, and sensation. In this lesson, you will know more about the parts and functions of the integumentary system. Its various roles are very important. So here are the objectives of integumentary system. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe the functions of the integumentary system and identify the parts of the integumentary system and its parts. Integumentary is one of the systems which play an important role in the body. It is made up of different organs that we cannot live without. The integumentary is an organ system consisting of different parts. It has a set of important functions in the body. The following are the important functions of this organ system. We have functions of integumentary system. First, first function, it acts as a barrier to protect the body from the outside world. Second functions of integumentary system or functions of the skin, it protects the body against diseases. So third, functions of integumentary, it helps retain body fluids. So alam naman natin, nagpe-perspire tayo. Functions of integumentary system, also, it eliminates waste products in the body in the form of sweat, pawis, oil, and wax. So, tinatanggal natin yan. So, we have also, this system also made up of different parts, namely skin, hair, nails, and endocrine glands. So we have the skin. So the skin is the largest organ of the body. Why the largest? It covers all parts of our body. So it weighs more than twice the brain. The skin of an average adult human has a surface area of about 1.5 to 2 square meters and a thickness of 2 millimeters. So, sabi dito, but only a few millimeters thick. So, it forms body's outer covering. So, all over the body, we have skin. So, it protects the body from chemicals, diseases. We have also ultraviolet rays of the sun. Para hindi tayo magkaroon ng cancer sa skin. And the physical damage. It is the body's first line of defense. Okay, the so skin is composed of the outer layer called epidermis, the middle layer called dermis, and the innermost layer called the subcutaneous layer. 
So, mal malalaman natin mamaya what is that three uh, layer of the skin. So, these are the layers of the skin. So, it is divided into three parts, namely epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis, which is subcutaneous tissue, this one. Okay? So, we have epidermis. So, epidermis, it is the outermost layer. When we say outer, nasa labas or external. Ito yung part na yun. So, that is the epidermis. So, outermost layer of the skin that covers almost entire body surface. So, almost lahat naman ng ating katawan is composed of epidermis. So, yung nakikita natin sa palabas, that is epidermis. Nakikita natin ngayon. Pag humarap tayo or nakita, pag humarap tayo sa salamin, ang makikita mo sa mukha mo, that is epidermis. So, it is the thinnest layer of the skin. When we say thinnest, ito yung pinaka manipis. So, it also provides a waterproof barrier for the body and creates the skin tone. So, kung makikita natin maputi tayo, that is, kung medyo makayumanggi tayo, that is the skin tone. It is made up of special cells called keratonocytes. Okay? So, the... The second layer of the skin is what we call dermis. Dermis is the thickest layer of the skin. When we say thickest, pinakamakapal. So, makikita naman natin itong layer na to. Ito yung, ito yung part or portion ng ating uh, dermis. It also gives the skin strength and elasticity. It is made up of dense, irregular connective tissue, nervous tissue, blood, and blood vessels. So, ito rin yung uh, layer na kung saan nagko-contain siya ng sweat glands, oil glands, and hair follicles. So, sabi ko nga meron din siyang blood vessels. So, nerves are also found in these layers which is essential for sensations such as touch, pain, heat, and pressure through the skin. So, ito yun. Okay, so we have the third layer of the skin, which is called the subcutaneous, subcutaneous tissue, or what we call the hypodermis. So, hypodermis is a layer of fat below the dermis, or it is the deepest layer of the skin. Deepest, pinaka, sa pinaka ilalim. Okay? Aside from serving as storage for food and energy, the fat layer serves as an insulator of heat. The subcutaneous layer is also contains larger blood vessels and nerves. So, the thickness of this layer differs from person to person and varies depending on its location in the body. So, depende pa rin sa kung anong, gano'ng ka kapal yung skin layer ng isang tao. So, nagdedepende siya sa bawat tao. Siguro kung medyo payat ka, uh, mas malaki yung chance na mas uh, mas malaki din o makapal din yung iyong hypodermis. So, depende. O, pag payat ka, medyo manipis siya. Pag mataba ka, medyo makapal. So, we have hair. It is an accessory organ of the integumentary system. It aids in a person's social functioning, it is made up of columns of tightly packed dead keratinocytes and is found and scattered all over the body. So, lahat naman ng ating katawan o buong katawan natin is composed of hair. It is divided into different parts, namely hair follicle and hair bulb. So, malalaman natin mamaya 
ang ibig sabihin or ano yung pinagkaiba ng dalawa, hair follicle and hair bulb. Hair is made up of keratin. Hair grows from the hair root within the hair follicle embedded in the skin. So the hair extends through the epidermis and protrudes from the skin. Most of the hair is dead and are keratinized. The only living part of the hair is at the bottom part, which is the hair, hair bulb. Hair serves many functions. The hair in the nose and ear filter dust particles. Diba pag tayo sumising po, yung ating uh, mga buhok sa ilong ang nagpifilter ng mga alikabok. Kaya kung mapapansin natin, sorry for the term, yung tinatawag natin na ulangot, which is yun yung um, dumi na nafi-filter ng ating ilong. Sa tulong na rin ng ating tinatawag na cilia or yung buhok sa ilong. So, eyebrows deflect sweat to protect the eyes. So, ano yung eyebrow natin? So, yun yung sa pilik mata, tinatawag. Para hindi mapasukan naman kung ano-anong alikabok. Hindi agad-agad mapasukan. So, facial hair reduce, reduces the skin exposure to UV rays. So, nakakatulong din yung ating uh, buhok sa muka para hindi tayo tamaan ng UV rays or ultraviolet rays. Hair in the scalp protects the hair and the scalp from the abrasion. So, we have also different types of melanin determine the color of the hair. So, yung melanin, ito yung uh, nagsasabi kung ano yung color ng ating buhok. Halimbawa, may, uh, may kulay brown, may kulay itim. The more melanin, sabi, the more the melanin daw, the darker is the color of the hair. So, pag maitim yung buhok mo, mas marami kang tinatawag na melanin sa katawan. So, have you ever wondered why old people tend to have gray and white hair? So, ibig sabihin, kapag uh, gray na yung color ng, uh, o gray or white na yung color ng buhok ng matatanda, it is because as one grows older, less and less melanin is produced. So, pakonti ng pakonti yung melanin na napuproduce ng kanilang katawan, ng kanilang skin. So, di pa tayo. So, ito yung hair follicle na tinatawag natin. So, it is anchored the hair into the skin. It regulates hair growth. It opens the sebaceous glands. It lets the oil and wax from the body to go out. So, ito rin yung dahilan para yung ating mga pawis ay magsilabasan. So, yung mga, uh, kung mapapansin mo, kapag tayo nagpapawis, medyo parang mamantika. So, yun yung wax na tinatawag natin. Lalo, nakakatulong itong hair follicle na to para uh, mailabas neto yung mga unwanted wastes ng ating katawan. So, ito yung hair bulb natin. Yung hair bulb natin, it forms the base of the hair follicle. It is made up of living cells that divide and grow to build the hair shaft. It modify hair growth and structure at different times of life. So, ito yung pag mumuno tayo ng buhok sa ating uh, ulo, meron ka makikita mga ganito. Ito yung hair bulb. Yan, yan yung hair bulb. Okay, ito naman yung shaft. Ito, ito yung mismong buhok. Tinatawag. Yan, yan. Hair shaft ang tawag dyan. Si Basio's gland, ito yun yan. Ito yung part na yun. Then, ayan. So, yan yung hair follicle natin. Or yung mga parts ng ating buhok. So, pag bunot natin, meron siyang makikitang ganyan. So, next natin yung hair, ah, yung nails, uh, rather. It covers the tips of the fingers and toes. It is also an accessory organ of the integumentary 
a system that is made up of sheets of hardened keratinocytes. It protects the fingers and toes from environmental damage. It is made up of several parts, namely nail plate and nail cuticle. So, yan yung nails. So, nakakatulong din siya para hindi tayo or hindi tayo maprotektahan yung ating mga fingers sa mga environmental damage. So, ito yung nail plate. Nail plate, it is the actual fingernail. It is made up of translucent keratin. So, ito yung nail plate. Pagkita naman natin, itong part na to. Ayan. Ayan yung nail plate natin. Nail groove. Ito. Lanula, yung white portion natin. Okay, so yun yun. Ito naman yung tinatawag natin cuticle. So, mapag-aral natin yan next. Dito na. Ayan. So, ito yung cuticle natin. Ito, totong part na to. Ayan ang cuticle natin. Okay? So, cuticle, it is a layer of clear skin located at the bottom edge of the fingers and toes. Ito yun, cuticle. So, exocrine glands, it helps reduce body sweat, oil, and wax. Helps and Helps cool down the skin surface, helps protect the skin, and moisturizes the skin surface. It is divided into two parts, namely sebaceous gland and sweat glands. So, ito yung exocrine natin, na example. So, ito yung mga daluyan ng ating mga unwanted wastes. So, ito yung mga pores natin para dyan din lumabas. Ayan, ito yung mga daluyan na yan para lumabas yung mga unwanted wastes ng ating katawan. So, nag, ito rin ay nagsiserve as para maging moisturized, ma-moisturize yung ating skin surface. Yung parang hindi siya tuyot or nami-maintain yung ating body fluid sa ating katawan. So, yan yun. Next natin is yung tinatawag na sebaceous gland. A small oil producing glands found in the dermis. So, saan nga ulit yung dermis? Yung dermis ay pinaka makapal na layer ng ating katawan. So, doon makikita itong sebaceous gland. Okay? Small oil producing gland. So, ito yung nagpo-produce ng mamamantika na uh, Mamantika na fluid. It is, attach, it is attached to the hair follicles. It produces oil sebum and waxy substance. So, ito yung uh, tinatawag natin na sebaceous glands. So, dito yun sa part na yun. Ayan. Ayan, ito yun. So, ito yun. Nakakonekta siya dito para if in case, lalabas na lang siya dito. So, para uh, ito yung dito siya magpo-form sa skin surface na yan ng mamantika. So, sweat glands na tayo. It is a small tubular or tubular structure of the skin that produces sweat found in the dermis and goes out of the skin pores. So, yung sweat gland natin, yung mga pawis-pawis, ito lumalabas yan at mapapaikot siya dito papalabas. So, lalabas siya sa mga pores. Yung pores natin, yung butas, yung butas na nakikita natin sa ating skin. Yan yung pores na tinatawag. Okay? So, for learning task 1. So, we one. have learning task 1. We're going to answer it. To complete the sentence in the paragraph, write your answers on your answer sheets or paper. So, the blank is a part of the integumentary system which covers almost the entire body. So, what will be your answer here? Okay, very good. That is skin. The skin is a part of the integumentary system which covers almost the entire body. 
Okay? So, next natin, another part of it is the blank, which is an accessory that is made up of layers of dead keratonocytes. So, that is very good. That is hair. So, third one. Another accessory of the integumentary system is the blank, which is found at the end of the fingers and toes. What is that? Okay, good job. That is cuticle. Then, the exocrine glands has two parts. These are the blank glands and the blank, which produces the sweat and sebum, respectively. That is, good job. That is sebaceous and sweat glands. Okay, very good. So, learning thus too much column A with column B, write your answer on your answer sheets. We have column A, hair shaft, cuticle, dermis, nail matrix, sebaceous glands. So, for column B, the, so ito yun, yung letter A, the thickest layer of the skin produces the sebum or oily substance. So, ito, this record letter C. Huwag na po natin ilagay yan kasi nagkamali ng type. So, letter D, seen above the scalp, protects nails from the bacteria. Letter E, the area where nails starts to grow. Letter F. So, for letter uh, hair shop, that is saan dyan ang tamang sagot? So, that is letter D, seen above the scalp. So, yun yung nakikita natin yung pinaka mismong buhok. Then, uh, cuticle. The area where nails start to grow. There means the thickest layer of the skin. Nail matrix, that is, to protect the nails from bacteria. Then, sebaceous gland is letter B. Produces the sebum or oily substance. So, for learning task 3, you're going to answer it on your own. Fill in the crossword puzzle with the correct answer. Use the given clues below. Write your answer on your answer sheets. Or you're going to copy this uh, puzzle. Go, yes. 